Okay, now the recording is in progress. I will share the screen. I will share the presentation for today's class. Give me just one sec. Okay, I'm sharing the presentation right now, but before I do this, I was forgetting something very important. I'm so I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Okay, I was forgetting something here. Um, I will stop sharing just now because I want to introduce to two practitioners, right? Two people, they are in the fifth grade for the bachelor degree in English. One of them is Carlos, right? Carlos, can you please introduce yourself to them so they can know you? Okay, all right. Hello guys, good afternoon to everyone. Uh, I'm happy to be here with you, sharing the knowledge that I have. I hope that you can learn about me and I hope that I can learn about you. I will be the practitioner to help to Mr. Portillo. Thank you. Very good, Carlos, very good. Okay, and William as well. William is going to be helping me in this class, so, Please, William, can you please introduce yourself? Hi, guys. Good afternoon. My name is William, and I'm going to be your practitioner in that subject. I hope to get along with all of you, and I hope to help the teacher, Mr. Portillo. And I'm here to be any, to resolve any doubt about the subject. Very it's a pleasure to be here. My pleasure as well, William. Okay, so they are Carlos and William. They are going to be my practitioners in the subject. So both of them are going to be helping me, okay? And they are going to be helping you as well. I mean, if you have a question, you can ask Carlos, you can ask William, whatever you want about the subject, okay? About the homeworks, you can ask them. Not just me, ask them as well. So I will add you, Carlos and William, to the group today, okay? After the video conference, I will add you to the group uh where where, where i mean for, for to the to the general group that we have in whatsapp okay let's see okay now yes i'm going to start the the first uh the, the the class i'm going to share the presentation let me see here just one sec i want to make it bigger okay now there you go so um we are in unit number two we are talking about the different types of paragraphs that we have. Uh, the last time we were talking about what kind of paragraph in the last class. Can you tell me? What kind of paragraph were we just talking about in the previous class? <clears throat> mm -hmm. An illustrative and process. Process and illustrative, you said, right? Oh, okay. Perfect. Yeah, it was illustrative paragraph and the process paragraph. Okay, and that's good. Today, we're going to be talking about comparison and contrast paragraph. Okay, that's our topic. Comparison and contrast paragraph. That's why it's kind of different. This is the goal for the course. This is the, these are the contents, questions, comparison, the contrast paragraph, and the formats. Now, I have this question for you. What's a comparison contrast paragraph? What's that? What comes to your mind when you listen to comparison paragraph, contrast paragraph? What comes to your mind? Let me know. You can, you can do it by turning on your microphone or by commenting that on the chat, okay? What is a comparison contrast paragraph for you? What comes to your mind? I don't want a definition for, from the internet, okay? I, wanna, I, I don't want a definition from Google. I want a definition from your head, okay? Think about it, what comes to your mind? And let me know. Mm -hmm. Let me know in the comment section. Let me know, you can, you can as well turn on your microphone if you please. Ah. Right. I guess uh, a contrast and comparison paragraph is a paragraph where you write the difference in the sim similarities of uh, 
of an object or something like that. Very good. So differences and similarities about an object, person, animal, whatever, right? Okay, very good. Very good, Gabo. Let me read the comments here. Gabriela said, a comparison paragraph is a type of paragraph that consists of comparing two or more things. And the contrast paragraph consists of differentiating two things by writing an essay. Okay, kind of, kind of. It's good, Gabriela. Jose Vargas, Jose Vargas said, comparison could be when we write a text to compare two or more things. Very good, Jose. Huh? Somebody else? Comparison contrast paragraph, what comes to your mind? Let me know. Mm -hmm. Let me know what comes to your mind. Oh, one, don't be afraid. Okay, I have another comment here. Okay, Milena, the comparison paragraph consists of explaining herself by means of a specific examples, the similarities between two things or themes. Okay, good, Milena. I like that, I like it. I will ask directly to, uh, let me see here. Is Carla here with us right now? Carla, I don't see her. I guess Carla's not here with us. Okay, then Marta, give me your, the, the definition for comparison concept paragraphs. Hello, Marta. Hi there. Marta, Marta, are you here with us? Yes, you're here with us. Ah, oh, yeah, I can hear. Okay. What did you say? Okay, Marta, I want the definition for comparison contrast paragraph. The definition. I mean, what comes to your mind when you listen to this comparison and contrast paragraph? What comes to your mind? What do you think it is? Mm hmm. Okay, Rachel said, from what I understand, comparison is when we when we discuss elements that are similar, while contrast discusses elements that are different. Very, very good. I like that. I like that. Rachel, right? Rachel. I like the definition that you gave me. Marta, I think it's like it is like differences between two things. Very good, Marta. Yeah, it's a good idea. It's a good idea. You're right. Okay, but I, 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 I'm I, going to stay with the definition that Rachel gave me, okay? Rachel said, comparison is when we discuss elements that are similar, okay? that they, Please keep on your mind that comparison, when we talk about elements that are similar, okay? That's a comparison. And contrast, when we talk about elements that are different. Okay? Comparison and contrast. That's the thing. Basically, compare, compare and contrast at, um, at, in, in, in a way, it's kind of the same, right? Because you can compare something that's similar and you can compare uh, I mean, you can compare talking about the similarities, right? And you can compare talking about the differences, which, which I mean, when you're talking about the differences, it's like uh, you, you, you are just contrasting something, okay? That's contrast. So it's basically kind of the same, right? Let me see now. Okay, I'm going to move to the next slide. And I got here this, I'm going to make myself smaller. So you can see it well. Uh, okay, and I, I will stop my camera just now. Okay, comparison and contrast paragraph. Mm, can somebody help me read this slide, please? Mm -hmm. 
May I? I? Yeah, sure. Thank you. The comparison paragraph compares two subjects and discusses how they are alike and lists a few examples. In the construct paragraph, two subjects are discussed as how they are different. Again, listing a few examples. A comparison or contrast paragraph should be tightly focused on a meaningful difference or similarity between two things, people, faces, or ideas. You should use specific details and example to explain why the different or similarity matters. Very good, Milka. Thank you very much for your participation. You did excellent. Okay. Now, let me just recap what just Mil what Milka read. Okay. Okay. Let me just draw something here. Okay. So basically, comparison and contrast paragraph. They are focused on differences or similarities, okay? Differences or similarities. Now, between what? Between two things, people, places, or ideas, okay? Now, when you're writing a comparison contrast paragraph, you should uh, focus on that, similarities and differences, okay? And please, use specific details and examples to explain why the difference or the similarity matters, okay? So you are going to use details and examples to explain why that difference is important and why that similarity is important, okay? Basically, that's it, that's it in general, right? In general, now we're going to go deep into that, okay? I'm just uh, clear drawings and let's move to the next slide. Okay, now I have this other one here. Can somebody else help me read this slide? Somebody else, please. Hmm? Okay. Gabo, there you go. Gabo, I cannot listen to you. Hello, Gabo. Okay, I guess Gabo having problems. I'm, I'm a sir. I'm a sir. Okay, Sorry. there you go. I, there you go. I, I I couldn't hear anything. Okay, there you go. Um, there you go. Hmm? I think uh, be sure to take time and think about the two elements that you want to compare and contrast. Take some time to brainstorm similarities and differences. Furthermore, be sure to think of the specific examples. Very good, Gabo. Thank you very much. Okay, I'm going to recap what Gabo read. Okay, it says think, right? What are you going to do first? You are going to think, okay? You're going to use your brain to think. Think about what? Think about the two elements that you are comparing or the two elements that you are contrasting, okay? That's what you're going to be thinking about. You are going, if you are comparing something, you are going to think on the similarities, okay? You are going to brainstorm similarities. If you are uh, contrasting two elements, you are going to think or you are going to brainstorm differences, okay? And after you think of the similarities or differences, please think of a specific examples, okay? Give us an example so that we can understand what you're saying, okay? Very good, very good, very good. Let's move on. I got this other paragraph here and I want somebody else, not Gabo, not Milka. Thank you very much, Gabo and Milka. But I want somebody else right now to help me read this slide. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Elena, there you go. Okay, focus your ideas, brainstorm about the similarities or difference in your topic. Choose a focus from your list that gives new and worthwhile information about the topic. Rather than the obviously paragraphs about the differences in color between red and green apples. For instance, you might explain how bakers will use each differently based on the different flavor. For example, 
Green apple have a tartar flavor and so will be more appropriate for a pie than a sweeter red apple, which will be a better choice for send a lamb baked apple. Very good, Milena. Thank you very much. Okay, pay attention to this part, yeah, right? Because we have a good example here about comparison and contrast paragraph. It says, okay, after you brainstorm the similarities or the differences, if you are comparing or contrasting, so you will focus on something, right? Focus um, on, the, on, the, on the good information that you have, okay? Focus on the most important information. For example, it says, rather, rather than the obvious paragraph about the differences in colors, okay? Uh, this is like kind of obvious, right? If I have a red apple, if I have a green apple, I mean, that is the difference in color is obvious, right? This one is red and this one is green. That's obvious, okay? You don't have to write a paragraph about differences in color because that's obvious, okay? So that's what it says right here. Rather than the obvious paragraph about the differences in color between red and green apples, right? For instance, and now this is what you should do. You might, you might explain how bakers will use each differently based on their different flavors. Okay, now what is a difference that, that is not that obvious between red and green apples? The flavor, right? The flavor. It says green apples, green apples have a tartar flavor. And so, okay, that, that's the difference, right? Green apples have a tarty flavor. That's the difference. And now uh, the person here is giving us an example, right? So, and, and it says, so will be more appropriate for a pie than sweeter red apples, okay? So it's more appropriate. I mean, green apples are more appropriate for making a pie than red apples. Now, Red apples, it says, will be a better choice for a standalone baked apples. Okay. That's, uh, I mean, red apples are used for a different thing. Okay. Green apples are better for, um, for a pie. Okay. For a pie, for making a, for, for cooking a pie. So that's the difference. I mean, what I want you to understand from this paragraph is that the police. Do not talk about differences that are obvious, okay? Go deep, go deeper, right? Go deeper. Uh, consider and take, uh, take as an example this, right? Red and green apples. The obvious difference is that one is red and the other is green, right? That's obvious. Now, a better choice for making a difference between those two apples will be the flavor, right? Because red apples and green apples taste different, differently, okay? They are very different. Okay, now let's move on to the next paragraph. And I have the example here, okay? This is a very interesting part. I want you to focus on this. Okay, I have in the left side, Right, compare and contrast paragraph. A step two. This is step. Uh, step one was the was the previous slide. Okay, step. This is step one. This is step two. Okay, follow this format. Letter A. Create a topic sentence to explain the comparison. Okay, in the topic sentence, you have to explain the comparison or contrast, and its importance. Right, and its importance for you over a point as explained in your thesis. Now let's take a look to letter A here. Allow me to make myself smaller. Okay, there you go. <clears throat> oh, sorry. Okay, there you go. It says letter A, there are many differences and likeliness between my two brothers. Okay, we're talking, uh, this person is talking about, about her two brothers, right? This person. There are many differences and likenesses 
between my two brothers, okay? Now, that is like the topic sentence, right? And it's explaining the importance, okay? They are very different. Those two brothers are very different. Now, letter B, develop the paragraph with a specific information to illustrate the comparison or contrast and how it suppo supports your overall point. Okay, that's letter B, it says, Glenn, my eldest brother, was very rebellious as a teenager, okay? That is a specific information. We're providing a specific information to illustrate the comparison, okay? So Glenn, my eldest brother, was very rebellious as a teenager, okay? Now, letter C, include examples, detailed explanation, definitions, and whatever other kind of support that makes your thinking clear. Okay, that's letter C. Letter C, for example, he will go out drinking all night with his buddies and was always looking for trouble. Okay, that is Glenn, okay? Now, we are going back to letter B, okay? What do we do in letter B? Okay, we are going to add a specific information to illustrate the comparison in letter B. So now we're talking about Eric. Eric, who is older than me, but younger than Glenn, was not rebellious as a teenager. That's a specific information. I mean, Glenn is older than me, but younger than Glenn, was not rebellious as a teenager, okay? Now, letter C, we are, we are going to provide the example. A couple of examples are the fact that Eric always put his academics ahead for everything and stayed out of trouble. Okay, that's the example. I mean, he's not rebellious. Why? Because he always put his academic ahead of everything and stayed out of trouble. Now, we're going back to letter B again. Letter B, we're going to add specific information to illustrate the comparison, right? Remember that. And it says, Glenn did not attend college. Glenn did not attend college. I mean, that's the specific information. Now, letter C is the example, but pursued a career in the military. That's the example. Now, whereas Eric did attend college, that's the specific information. Letter C, that's the example became a pharmacist and is in the Army National Guard, right? So he didn't attend college, but he became a pharmacist and is in the Army National Guard. Okay, that's the example. What I want you to understand here is that I got letter B, C, B, C, B, C, B, C. Why? Because I'm adding a specific information about the differences and I'm adding an example after each a specific information that I'm, that I'm adding here, okay? I provide the information to illustrate the comparison and I give an example. I provide the information to illustrate the comparison and I give an example. I provide the information to illustrate the comparison or contrast and I give the example, okay? That's what I want you to have clear in your mind. Let's take a look to this. Now we got letter C and D. We got letter C again. Remember, letter C, letter B, I'm sorry. Letter B, remember the letter B is the specific information. And letter C is the example. So I got letter B again here in the right, in the right side. So in this side, in this side, I got letter B again. Letter B said, they both are religious. Okay, this is the specific information. Now the example, let us see. But Glenn is a Catholic who speaks with anyone and everyone about his religion. And Eric is a Christian who lets you believe what you believe. Okay? I got the specific information. They both are religious. The example, Glenn is a Catholic who speaks with anyone and everyone about his religion. So I'm talking about religion, right? And Eric is a Christian who lets you believe 
what you believe. Now, again, letter B, so specific information. It says, both Glenn and Eric have a wonderful sense of humor. Now the example, letter C. There is never a dull moment when they are in the same room. Letter B, a specific information about the differences or contrast that, I, that, I'm, that I'm just trying to show you here. Okay, letter B, a specific information. Glenn and Eric are both married to their high school sweethearts and have had large families. Okay, now the example. Glenn has three boys and one girl. Eric has three girls. Now, letter D is different. It says, create a concluding sentence to sum up the similarities or differences and why they matter. Okay, so in letter D, we're going to uh, create a concluding sentence, okay? In that concluding sentence, we shall say, we shall sum up similarities or differences, right? And say why they matter, okay, why they matter. Take a look to letter D, it says, Lastly, they both own beautiful homes and are comfortable for their family sizes. That are comfortable for the family sizes. My brothers are very different yet similar. Okay? They are different, but at the same time, they are similar. If you see in, in this paragraph, this person was talking about differences and similarities. So basically, this paragraph has both um, comparisons and contrast. It's making a comparison and at the same time, a contrast between the two brothers, okay? So you can write a paragraph only stating the, the, the differences, okay? Only comparing. Or, or you can write a paragraph stating the, um, pardon, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You can write a paragraph where you can, you, you can state the similarities, right? So you are comparing and you can write a paragraph where you can state the differences. So you're, you are contrasting, okay? So you can do that. I mean, that's not a problem. You can do that. I mean, one paragraph for this and the other one for this, or you can mix it up. Like in the example that I gave you, you can mix it up. It's not a problem. Now, Let's talk about transitions. Now, can somebody help me read this slide, please? Somebody else, not the ones who already participated, somebody else. Me. Okay, Nicole, there you go. Okay, include transitions. Add transitions throughout your paragraph to more clearly connect the ideas to each other and your overall argument. Use words and phrases like similarly or consequently to illustrate how the ideas relate. Very good, thank you very much, Nicole. Okay, it says add transitions, right? So transition words throughout the paragraph to more clearly connect the ideas, okay? This is to, to make a better connection between the ideas, okay? For example, those transitions can be similarly, consequently, and to illustrate how the ideas relate. Let me just give you an example here. Okay. Okay, there you go. Okay, lastly, for, for example, in letter D, in letter D, which is the last uh, letter right here, you can see the word lastly. Lastly, it's a transition word, okay? To connect the ideas. But in the first line, in the first line right here, you can see in letter C, but, okay? You can see but right there. So, but is a transitional phrase, a transitional word. We got lastly, we got but, and whatever, let's see. Both, both is a transitional phrase as well, both, okay? Let me give you more examples. I guess we have more in the other part of paragraph. Okay, let's see. Uh, da, da, da. Okay, we got right here, whereas, whereas, that's a transitional, whereas 
It's a transitional phrase, okay? So remember to use transitional phrases between the paragraph, okay? So you can illustrate how the ideas relate to each other. And I have these examples here. You can use in the same way and also in addition, as well as both, neither, each of, just as, so, similarly, like, to, the same. And you can, um, th this, these transitional expressions are for comparisons, okay? For making comparisons. And this one, these ones right here are for contrasting, okay? For making a contrast. We got although, whereas, but, however, controversially, on the other hand, in contrast, while, yet, unlike, okay? This one are for contrasting, and these others right here are for comparisons, okay? Now, we are just finishing this, so um, time is, uh, we're running out of time just right now. I mean, got just three minutes. <laughs> so, and I want to explain this to you. I mean, I want to explain the main activity, okay? So um, I will stop, I will stop the, the conference right now. I will stop this and you can join again, okay? Just to explain the main activity, okay? I will explain the main activity just right now. If you have questions, you can ask me questions about it, okay? So I will just stop this and you can join at the same time using the same link, okay? Let's do it.